So, United Way uh, is actually the oldest charity in the world. It is uh, 128 years old and it was started in US. And uh, the philosophy of the organization is uh, that it believes that, you know, if a problem exists in the community, it could, it could be solved by the uh, members of the same community. At times what happens, the platform is not available for people to come together and talk. Uh, you know, uh, within a community you would have people who will have uh, solutions, people who will have problems, people who will have also money. But it's just that the platform doesn't exist. So with that concept, United Way started, uh, you know, back uh, in, you know, 128 years back uh, in US. And the, actually the corporates like this concept very much. Uh, corporates also have a philosophy to contribute to the community where they work. Uh, now, corporates, uh, you know, uh, strength area is not to work in the community. So, they, they, they struggle to figure out what are the issues on which they should highlight in a community or make their investments. Uh, so, they started partnering with United Way and say that, can you help us to identify the issues in the communities which we can pick it up and contribute so that we are able to develop a sustainable community around us. Uh, in Bangalore, United Way was established, uh, you know, six years back. Um, and the, the, the mandate that we took over was to see how we can actually mobilize the caring power of the community because that's what United Way has been doing uh, to see how you can actually work with corporates, how can you work with the local communities and get them together around a common agenda that needs to be focused on. Uh, we uh, started, uh, you know, two significant and landmark, uh, you know, uh, campaign in Bangalore. Uh, one is uh, Wake the Lake campaign, which works on water issues in Bangalore because uh, we know water is so critical for the city of Bangalore, we know the situation of the lakes. And the second thing that we started working on to work with children between, uh, you know, three to six years of age because that's where the foundations of the children are built in. Um, we, all, we know that Bangalore city was known as a pensioner's paradise, a garden city. But very few people know that actually Bangalore was also known as the city of lakes. You know, in uh, 1937, there were about 1,000 lakes in the city of Bangalore. And today, in 2014, we are just left with about 200 lakes. Uh, see, the, uh, you know, the challenge the city, when the city was formed, one of the challenges was that it did not have any perennial source of water. So the founders of the city actually, you know, made um, made this, they dug up these tanks all around the city to, you know, capture the rainwater and that used to, um, you know, uh, fulfill the requirement of the, you know, the community living around it. So traditionally, if you look at it, uh, the lakes in Bangalore used to be used by, uh, say, the Dhobi communities and the local villages used to use it, fishermen used to use it and it also used to get, uh, you know, help us to recharge water table. But over a period of time, uh, you know, uh, lakes have not given their due importance and they have been dying. Uh, and there are several issues responsible for it. You know, there was a time when uh, malaria was a big problem in a city like Bangalore and in fact for the whole country. Uh, that time government says, let's go ahead and dump, you know, mud on every, you know, place where you have open water because they wanted to reduce this uh, mosquito menace then. And so many lakes were, you know, got closed like this. It was small and they just got closed like this. Uh, then uh, there was a time when Bangalore started, uh, you know, supplying water to pipes, you know. That was another time when, you know, the lakes did not get its own importance. Now, if you see, we are finding it difficult to actually draw water from Kaveri. I mean, you know, that's, that's a problem. Uh, recently, you know, World Health Organization did a study which says that by 2020, uh, every person who is living in Bangalore will only have about 78 litres of water per day for its consumption, you know, his or her own consumption, whereas the requirement is about 150 litres. So we are actually, you know, moving towards, uh, you know, a situation where there will be not enough, you know, water. And uh, we all know that water is one important issue if, you know, if that doesn't exist, there is no community living around it. Uh, so that's very critical for the city of Bangalore. Apart from that, you know, the, the amount of development that is taking place in Bangalore city, the number of trees have been cut down. Uh, it's actually uh, impacting the weather in a very bad way. I mean, you know, uh, there are times when people say that they did not even use a ceiling fan in their houses. Now, you know, if you want to live com comfortably during a daytime, you need a AC. So, you know, temperature is actually rising. Uh, why is it happening? Because Bangalore is losing its green cover. 
Um, so, you know, lake is one area, you know, uh, which government has started working on and it's become a secured area where you can actually plant trees. So, in the last 3, 4 years, we have done at least uh, about 10,000 tree plantations on these lakes and they, out of that 10,000, at least 9,000 have survived. So, we are able to compensate in some small ways and, you know, bring back those trees. So, these are the two critical things which is to, you know, uh, somehow balance out the, you know, the loss, um, you know, which is taking place because of the rapid urbanization is happening and Bangalore is losing the green cover. And the second thing is to how to address the water situation in Bangalore in the long run. Uh, so, with these two intent is what we started with the lead campaign in uh, 2011 actually. United Way is actually uh, plays two critical role uh, in this campaign which is to mobilize people and to create awareness. So, when I say mobilizing uh, people, we are mobilizing uh, every section of the community. Uh, so, you know, we have mobilized local resident welfare associations, we have mobilized government, uh, we have mobilized volunteers from different colleges to work with us, uh, volunteers from different corporates to work with us. And uh, we also realize that, uh, you know, the corporates in Bangalore are, you know, a part of the whole community. And they have a critical role to play in uh, ensuring that we are able to uh, restore lakes in Bangalore. So, we have been mobilizing the corporates as well. Uh, and each, uh, you know, uh, each uh, uh, stakeholder has a very significant role to play. So, for instance, when we say we mobilize corporates, so corporate comes and, you know, provide funds uh, to undertake certain activities on the lake. Uh, the local resident welfare association ensured that the money that gets mobilized through the corporate has been spent for the on the right way. Government gives us permission to undertake those activities. Uh, the volunteers actually, you know, go and do work on the lake, which is uh, tree plantation drives, lake cleaning drives. So, you know, it just helps to create and keep the momentum there. Uh, apart from that, we've been doing a lot of awareness activities around the lake. Uh, you know, to mobilize more people and, you know, bring it uh, as an important issue in a city like Bangalore to look at. Uh, so, we have done things like lake you know, which is a walk around a lake. Um, you know, we have done human chain around Alsur Lake. Um, we have worked with some government schools where we have done, um, you know, uh, competitions on environment for these children to come together and talk about it. So, that's, uh, you know, what this campaign is doing. Yeah, so, you know, uh, uh, it's interesting when 2011, when we started off this week, the lake campaign, uh, there was no, uh, there was no one who was actually taking up this issue. United Way was one of these organizations who actually took it up and said, okay, we will launch this campaign and see how it goes. And it's, it's very interesting to see how it has evolved over a period of time. Now, you, you, if you look around, you will find at least uh, 50 lake communities that has come up. Yeah, and they're different forms and shapes, you know, some are loose groups, some are like registered trust. There's also a federation called One Bengaluru for Lake, you know, that has also emerged. Uh, so, you know, um, we feel very proud and we feel happy that this is happening because uh, uh, issue like lake is something that one organization cannot solve it. You know, we need to all work together towards it. And, uh, you know, so we are also, so we see as a part of this whole, uh, you know, federation that is getting formed around. Um, you know, lakes. Uh, in that particular thing, what the, the one specific role that we uh, see us playing is to actually, how we could actually mobilize uh, resources from the corporates. Um, you know, because that has been the strength of United Way globally. Corporates believe in us because, um, you know, because of the statutory compliances and the kind of work and the impact that United Way has created. So, they are comfortable to work with United Way and create an impact on the ground. So, that's certainly a specific role that we want to play. Uh, we, uh, so, you know, uh, coming back, we, we see ourselves as a part of the whole movement. And in that, the specific role that we would like to play is to actually, uh, you know, mobilize resources. Uh, the other critical role that we see ourselves playing is to actually create a neutral platform for people to come forward. Uh, what has happened over a period of time, you know, when people come together from different, uh, you know, parts of the society, they have different intent, there's, dif there's, there's, there's different objective that one wants to meet. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, and it's very important to see that, you know, if your agenda is lake, which is uh, to ensure that lake is being managed, that agenda should not be 
sidelined by anyone you know so we we see our, uh, ourselves as a platform where you know uh, people can only come together and talk about the lakes and be neutral uh, you know leaving aside their say political affiliations or uh, you know class affiliations or caste affiliation because there's so many dynamics that plays around uh, so that's uh, you know the kind of role uh, that we see ourselves playing um, so yeah for some lakes it was because right now we are working with about 7 lakes and we engage with about 16 lake communities uh, so when i say 7 lakes i mean that these 7 lakes are directly funded by united way through certain corporate partners um, and the other lakes where we are not funding uh, but we are just talking to the community members there uh, uh, and you know uh, we ourselves have critiqued our campaign saying that one of the you know thing is that we are not able to successfully do it right now to en actually engage uh, you know people from the uh, low income group into our campaign uh, people who are the traditional uh, communities who are living around in Bangalore for hundreds of years see over the years uh, you know the way this campaign is actually evolving you see that uh, you know near a lake you know a plotting happens when an apartment comes up um, I, I go and buy a flat in that and then I see a bad state of a lake in my you know uh, community or surrounding area I come from a lake group but this lake group is not able to actually get people who are traditionally living there for hundreds of years so that's actually has been one of the challenges that we are not able to get all sections of the people together to work on this uh, so um, you know and, uh, and, and that's why we are not able to actually uh, say get the political will into it you know because um, you know if you if you want to uh, create as a community event as a citywide community you need to work with all communities you need to work with your local MLA you know your uh, co uh, elected corporator uh, you know the slum dwellers who are living around the lake the people from low income uh, you know uh, groups plus the resident welfare association unless we all come together it's very difficult to actually create a sustainable impact on the lake. Uh, so this year we are trying to address this by actually um, you know proactively reaching out to you know the people in the slums who are residing in this um, you know close to the lake and doing more activities with them um, you know because th there is a perceived threat uh, you know in this community that we have come over and will take over their lake and because of that the attitude is defensive attitude so we need to create platforms we are able to speak to them and tell them see this lake you know as much as uh, you know it belongs to all of us and we all need to come together so we are looking at in 2015 and 16 to do more activities especially in government schools more in slums spread awareness about wake the lake campaign and create platforms where they can come also together uh, you know the with the privileged community in bangalore and talk about this issue No, the thing is, um, it was, I, I would say the nature it got evolved, you know, um, I mean it's human tendency that, uh, you know, I, I would not want to move out too much from my comfort zone and do something else. Uh, you know, people who have actually formed these lake movements right now and, you know, these small uh, associations, they are all net savvy people, right, they are all on, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Google groups and all that. So they, from the workstation only they can just form a group click a picture and post it there but people from the low income group they do not have access to things like this so while you know a discussion has evolved to a certain level and then you realize oh god i'm just missing an important section of the society when you try to reach out to them with a with a ready-made plan no one is willing to accept you because you know they 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 have a you know they have a hard feeling you know saying that uh, you know who are you and coming and telling me that this is how I should be on my lake I have lived on this lake for years um, and um, you know uh, the approach has been activity based right so saying that okay now I'm going to do a tree plantation right someone will from the traditional community will say what are you telling me I've been doing tree plantation for years for you it's a big thing for me it's nothing so so all those clashes are happening the thing is the approach has to be changed you don't have to go to them on activity base you need to go and understand what are they feeling about because there's this this feeling of anxiety and this feeling of uh, you know f f 
there's the fear that you know uh, you will go to restrict me for instance uh, these lakes have always been open for thousands of years there was no fencing on these lakes um, no timings kept on these lakes but today if you go to a lake which is rejuvenated it says you can enter from say you know uh, say so from dawn to dusk so that's kind of thing so now these people are feeling uh, i I've, I've been using this lake any time of you know the day i want how is it that you're putting restrictions on us because they haven't understood the concept yet they just saw that something happening and they feel threatened they feel tomorrow when i am leaving you may come and say that you please move on from here you know so so those are the problems that uh, you know the people traditional people are facing of course you know people like you know the dhobi community is not allowed to go now and you know wash their clothes there so they are finding it challenging uh, many places people are questioning why fishing is taking place but there's a lot there's a huge fishing community that lives so by right, right now government allows fishing hap- to happen on all lakes uh, but now they feel threatened you know if they come and they question us they might lose their job uh, so so those are the challenges and you know it's not very easy to solve these challenges because um, you know th- there are different mindset the different perception so you need to work towards it and over a period of time we see that is going to change but not in short term if you if you see uh, if you see a, a typical village setup there'll be in a typical village setup you'll find a community center or a community place where people come together and spend now those kind of uh, places is very difficult to find in a urban space like bangalore uh, you know uh, there are some areas like indranagar you will find a park you go to koramangala you will find a park but if you come out a slightly bit, you know outside bangalore city you won't find these common places for people to come together these 200 lakes are actually spread across bangalore city so the way we see it is these lakes getting uh, converted into common spaces for people to come together because um, otherwise there is no space that exists around uh, and the, uh, the way we see it, this places should be used as recreational uh, spaces for people from all sections of the society uh, you know at an very evolved stage we also see that these lake spaces could uh, become a platform for people to discuss about their local uh, issues you know um, so for instance um, you know i recently i had a chat with people uh, living in whitefield and they were talking about okay we need to work in government schools we work we need to work in anganwadis we need also need to improve lakes and roads so um, now these kinds of uh, you know discussions are actually happening very sporadically the way we look at it if all these 200 lakes are rejuvenated these lakes become common places and such discussion is happening at every location which is not about just one section of the society but for all the issues that exist whether it's garbage issue whether it's education issue whether it's health issues everybody coming together on one platform and talking about it and these uh, lake spaces could facilitate such discussion city of bangalore is actually you know in that way is very lucky if you compare bangalore city with any other city in india uh, they don't have such a vibrant uh, you know civil society like bangalore has uh, here people are ready to engage with the government i mean uh, in other cities people are more uh, you know uh, more cynical about how governments approaches and they they living in their own you know silos but bangalore does not is, does is not like that you know bangalore is a city where people are more outgoing asking questions to the government and uh, moving forward and lake is certainly is one of the examples we have seen from lakes people have moved to other issues also which you know help uh, so the 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 way we see lake movement is uh, you know um, moving forward like growing is we see it coming together as a federation you know we see it uh, you know in some ways we could also compare it with the labor movement that happened or the unions that exist uh, globally where you know there is a very strong voice of local people uh, which uh, cannot be negated by the government you know and uh, this will become one voice over a period of time and uh, you know uh, where the government would have to listen it has already started happening in you know some spaces but it's not happening pan bangalore say for instance uh, so this federation of small small you know um, you know associations who are working on lakes at one point of time it will get federated and uh, it will become a force it will become a voice where government will listen to it 
and together we'll be able to negotiate what works best for the city of Bangalore, starting with lakes and then we see as an opportunity to, you know, uh, spinning out into something other things like is whether it's about pollution, whether it's about traffic, uh, noise and, and, you know, slowly it will take over all other issues. You know, uh, we have seen this in Bangalore, like, you know, uh, on some specific lakes when the citizens have come together and say in some cases filed a PIL or some cases uh, when they have directly reached out to a minister or, uh, you know, uh, commissioner of BBMP, uh, they have taken initiative to call a meeting of all concerned departments together. So the way we see it, it's evolving, you know. Um, you know, traditionally governments have been working like that in, you know, fragmented uh, systems. We have an experience, you know, where we had a permission from BBMP to go and plant trees, uh, you know, on Martha Halli Ring Road. We did about 1,000 tree plantation, uh, we planted those 1,000 trees and we were hoping that they'll grow one day. One fine morning when we visited that half of them were uprooted. And it was done by some other government department who did not know what's happening there. You know, so uh, the and that was the situation. And then when this happened, we uh, reported to the commissioner and he called a joint meeting of all the departments. Uh, now that the citizens is becoming more sensitized, uh, they are demanding uh, questions, uh, you know, and answers for the, and the solutions. Government is evolving. You know, may not be in the structure right now. You cannot, you may not see that in the structures, but there are, uh, you know, interventions and steps being taken where they are convening all departments together and looking at a picture holistically. Any movement that has been successful, it has a homogeneous society working towards it. You look at Narmada Bachao Andolan. They were all people who were affected by issue and they, they were able to associate with the issues and that's why it became such a success. Look at any other movement across the world. So unless I associate myself with a cause, I won't be able to do it. The challenge in the urban spaces is like, uh, you know, um, for any specific issue, uh, some people are able to associate, some people are not able to associate. Going back to saying that, okay, fine, if I open my apartment window, I see a stinking lake, you know, I feel very sad about it. And I want to just do something about it. But there's a traditional community living around uh, that and they, see, they don't see it as a problem because they see, well, this is how it's been. And uh, so they, they don't see the urgency to work towards it. Uh, so the challenge to, you know, for any movement in an urban setup to expand or move is to see how does that movement, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, kept a place or has planning in place to engage all sections of society. You cannot leave any section. If you leave any section, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's very less chances that any uh, movement in an urban setup will going to be successful in that sense. The way the urban middle class is like, uh, you know, we, we, we only look inside our four walls. Uh, you know, there have been instances where I don't even know who my neighbor is, you know. I don't know who, who stays next door. That has to change, you know, um, given the way the society is evolving. Uh, we need to come out from our houses. We need to look in a locality of what's happening. A lot of issues can be solved if we actually uh, become little uh, more, uh, you know, outgoing and look at, you know, issues that affect people. Uh, we cannot live anymore in glass houses, you know. Uh, issues like garbage, issues like water, it, it's affecting everyone, you know. I may be, you know, today I may be rich, I may be able to pay more and get things done, but in the long run it's not going to happen. You know, a classical example is what's happening today uh, on Vartur Lake. I mean, if you look around Vartur Lake, there are only gated communities, right? And they are the people who are privileged people who could pay enough and get all facilities. Uh, but because they have actually uh, not address this issue or you know it came this issue came into their mind you know at a very later stage it has reached to an extent where they started polluting their water so people say that you know the what they recently did a water testing they found e coli bacteria in the water you know for privileged people we can actually filter it out through ro system and drink it what what happened to the poor person right the maid who is coming to your house or the child who is going to the government school he will drink the same water he'll fall sick you know, your driver will fall sick tomorrow, he won't come to the office. So, the situation is actually very, 
alarming and we need to all work to towards it come out of a house look at a community and work towards it so you know uh, what what also happened there different things that triggers movement you know sometimes it's uh, is it, is just some somebody's noble thought that i want to work on something somebody sometime it's you know a disaster like what's happening in warsaw lake so so i now i feel you know like we i know the white field rising community has been working on warsaw lake but uh, you know because of this issue that has happened yesterday and what's happening today it has actually you know brought the attention to the whole of city together and uh, we are hoping that you know now government will take action towards it and resolve this problem